Here is where I get to set my spirit free Here is where I find my naturality Where are we going? One thing I want to talk about the learn that we've seen in the student support team is Stony Brook students are the best and the brightest. We have no doubt about that. The folks who come to Stony Brook are very capable, coming from the top percentages of their classes. Um, then something like this happens, everybody goes remote. Maybe like Deanie says, you never thought about learning styles before. Now you're on Zoom and you're struggling. And what we see is the whole identity of who am I? If I can't do well academically, if I'm struggling academically, it's like an imposter syndrome. Am I a fraud? I thought I was smart. How come it's so difficult for me now? Because the idea of being able to be in a classroom with the energy of your professors and your TAs and now doing it on your own sort of, or in a breakout room where nobody turns on the camera, um, really intelligent, bright students are struggling with how come I can't learn? Because we never talked about learning styles before you were thrown into a scenario like this. And I agree with Deanie. I think from this moment forward, this is a takeaway from the pandemic that we're going to spend more time helping young people understand what their learning style is to prepare them for this type of a classroom hybrid, but also for the future. Ellen, define uh, the imposter syndrome. That's a, that's a term that's become very, very popular in certain certain circles but um, I'm not sure everybody knows what an imposter syndrome is. Well, I think the imposter syndrome is becoming popular, but it's always been there, but it was a secret because the secret is I'm afraid to tell somebody that I don't think I'm qualified for what I'm about to do. So there is a shame connected to that. When I first went into the profession, I worked in a rehab. I'm a social worker by trade, but I started working in the addictions field and I went into a rehab and I'm going to sit with people who are struggling with their addiction and talk to them about what would be best for them. Pure panic. What am I doing here? They put me in here too soon. I think I need 10 more years of experience before being that I must be an imposter. And the thing about the imposter syndrome is if you're feeling like maybe I'm in the wrong place or maybe I'm not ready for this, good for you because it means you're stretching your comfort zone. We would like everyone in their learning and professional experience, even in their relationships, stretch your comfort zone because that's when you grow. So if you're feeling a little bit like an imposter, like somebody believes that I can do this, but I'm not sure that I can, you need to go with that. We have a whole bunch of athletes in this, cl in this class also. You know what it means when your coach pushes you to the next level and you're not sure if you're going to be able to make that mark and then you do. There's a little bit of the imposter syndrome worked into that too, but you do it because somebody believes you can do it. So when we're talking about imposter syndrome now and people are talking about it openly because we just can't keep the secret anymore. There's too many people who are concerned that they're not capable. And then we get to point out you are capable. So when we're talking about learning styles, we really need to help people understand how will I learn best in this situation, in that situation, in the ones we haven't met yet, we have to keep that going and know that if you feel like you're not prepared, you're growing. It's a good sign. Push yourself in that way. I've seen a lot of heads nodding in regards to imposter syndrome and even eyes opening up like, wow, I didn't never do that. That was actually something I can identify and, and, and really connect with. Um, and I ask this question to you all. Is this something that you all have been experiencing? And also, are your peers experiencing the same thing as you, as you talk to each other and kind of like endure through this uh, this new normal, so to speak. Are you seeing some of these things that um, uh, Dini and um, Ellen have kind of talked about? Yeah, I think the imposter syndrome was uh, like a great point um, to bring up. I feel like um, because we're in like a different setting and as you mentioned, um, we're in a different learning environment. So some people take that and they may see like failure uh, within their studies. And then for somebody who or for athletics too, they may see kind of like a shift in how they're um, progressing and they may um, take it as, you know, like, who am I? Like, I'm not usually like this, like, you know, like what's going on and kind of um, 
have maybe like an identity crisis because they're not um, kind of like on track or they feel like they're um, getting off track and not being as successful as they were uh, when things were in person and, you know, um, think we were more social. Um, I think uh, like your mental health plays uh, also a factor into that because um, obviously if if when things are, when things like these like this are changing and your mental health changes, you know your motivation might change. Um, a lot of factors like come into play. So the whole um, imposter syndrome, I think a lot of that we're experiencing, and I guess nobody really knew the term for it. But I think you hit like nail right on the head with that and. I think we just all have to um, kind of like give give each other and give like, ourselves grace and um, understand that sometimes like it's okay to not be okay and just because like we're in this one wow. situation um, doesn't mean that it won't get better and it doesn't mean that we have to be like this forever like it's okay to you know like cry it's okay to feel like unmotivated but how are you gonna like work through that and kind of just like build up and keep going from there. Yeah. yeah. Right, when you talk to Judy, um, one of the questions you had is, you know, I, I identify as a, as a volleyball player, but I'm not gonna be a volleyball player when I get out of college. So what do I do with my identity? And I think you could tell everybody what you learned in that interview that you did so well. Judy said basically like you just have to highlight your your identities and your passions and understand that you aren't just one identity and highlighting one identity kind of hurts you because you're all of your identities and so me saying that I'm just a volleyball player like yes I am a volleyball player but I'm also a hard worker I'm working on a podcast I'm doing this I'm doing that and by saying I'm just a volleyball player I'm diminishing a whole Part of myself basically and just understanding what you are passionate about also helps you in volleyball is what I learned from Judy which that was a great answer the way she said it so if you didn't watch that podcast definitely go watch that one so yeah. so expand on that on the skill set that she she told you to take with you into the rest of your life uh, she, she talked about like being able to utilize things that you learn in one area and put them in other areas of your life. So I've learned teamwork. You use teamwork in when you're in um, the professional field as well. Like you're always going to have to do something. And this part of the conversation wasn't on camera, but we talked about how um, athletes will just do things. She said, um, if we're coming to set up um, a studio, an athlete will just start taking chairs down. Like, the, we'll do things without having to be <laughs> And so she's saying, like, things like this apply to other areas of your life. So look for the things that you can interchange. Even though you wouldn't think that it, it would apply, it does. Great. Oh, man. That was excellent. Because um, I, I think everybody who saw that video picked up on it as far as, like, us being, like, uh, advisors or, or faculty or, you know, professionals. We were like, hmm, you know, you're more than that. You know, I'm just just looking at your extensive Nike collection. Let's me know that. You know, so 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 please, do not shortchange yourself, Mahambe. Uh, you want to add, or um, being that you heard a little bit of the conversation, do you want to kind of give a little bit more insight about imposter syndrome and maybe how you pivot to kind of overcome that or get through that? One thing I've noticed with imposter syndrome is that whenever you feel like it's starting to rise or wherever you feel that way, I think it's great to take a break and look back see how far you've come because it's always an uphill battle and like maybe right now you're you're going through a little downhill phase but you've definitely climbed so far up that uphill so i think it's take it's nice to take a break and identify all of your accomplishments in the past because it it reminds you of why you're working so hard and why you're putting all this pressure on yourself and why you're actually working towards these goals so to see all everything that you've been able to accomplish already behind you and there's more so, so much more all right it kind of just like grounds you a little bit and bring you back to reality. And you know, it, it kind of eases the mind. So that, that would be my suggestion for dealing with the oh, okay. that's, that's me nodding my head because I know I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like I learned about the imposter syndrome during quarantine when I was taking a psychology class. And like, as soon as I read about it in the textbook, I was like, oh, yep, I have that. That's what I have. <laughs> like I've experienced this. Um, 
And it was, it, it, for me, like, I suffer from migraines sometimes. Thankfully, I haven't had one in a long time. And usually I get them when I'm looking at a screen for too long. So I was really worried about that when I knew we had to get on Zoom classes. I would feel like, like a borderline coming on and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I, I can't do this. But um, I think also too, like, you know, just being an athlete, there's always times where we just be going over obstacles plenty of times. And like Ellen said, like, there's been plenty of times where I practice, I felt like I couldn't do something. I'm like, my coach is bugging. Like, there's no way he's expecting me to do this. But because he's like, you know, you can do it, I do it. And I'm like, oh, like, I did it. <laughs> so I try to look at Zoom like the same way. And I'm like, you know what? And if I feel that way too, I know like, all right, you know, it's okay to break and just get, come back to it. Cause like the last thing I want is a migraine. <laughs> so definitely, um, it's definitely about like just knowing your body and also like just focusing and making sure like I know Jarvis he spoke about like penciling the time just for like me time and just like relaxing and stuff so I definitely try to um, do that. So also I, I just you, want to add Janelle that that you have put what uh, Nia just described in her interview with Judy into practice because you are the first one in our television class to step up and say, hey, I want to try that switcher. Hey, I want to direct. Hey, I'm going to, when everybody else is sitting back on, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of that. That makes it so, and man, you've mastered it. Now you're literally like teaching half the class in the, in the control room. So you have put those skills sort really out there and boy, you are going to go far. I know it. Thank you. And one of the yeah. other things that you just talked about, like getting the migraines and having to walk away and do all that kind of stuff. Um, I think one of the things that um, the pandemic has given us in the Stony Brook students, faculty and staff in particular, you know, you have to do your clear app every day. You have to check your temperature. You have to see if any symptoms check. You know, in the addictions field, people who are in recovery have to check their inventory every day. How am I doing? How am I doing emotionally? How am I doing physically? How am I doing in my relationships? And folks who aren't struggling in that way and getting into recovery, we take that stuff for granted. So the idea that we have to take a pause every single day and learn about ourselves, how am I feeling? What's happening? Is this a migraine coming on? I need to walk away and come back. I love that because you folks are leaders and you're creative leaders. And I'd love to hear what you have for ideas of how maybe you can make Maybe you can make this thing better. I like the triangles in the different octagon shapes that Nia came up with and all that. But like, how do we make looking at ourselves and taking care of ourselves better if some of our environment is going to be one dimensional? Because human beings, we respond to the three dimensional. We get the energy from the other human being. If this is going to be part of our days, because I've been trying to figure that out for myself, I'm such a people person, but if this is part of our days, what creative things do you leaders have for your peers about how do you step away or what other things writing down, what other possible things can we do to keep our own energy in place when we need it most and also to kind of give others the energy because if we're not helping somebody else, our energy is going to be low. That's part of our human connection to each other. So what do you have? What are some creative ideas that you can pass to your friends who and friends and strangers who are listening to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah.